Erin Lawler Patterson, the goodness chick. I'm an addictions counselor, motivational speaker, author, and parent coach. Join me on the journey of navigating the joys and pitfalls of life, addressing parenting, giving back, mental health, addiction, and relationships. If it takes a village, then join me as one of those villagers. Villagers wanted. All right, so today we're going to be talking about the topic of resiliency, stigmas, and goodness. And you might be thinking, well, that's a whole lot to talk about. And yes, it is. But today I'm really super pumped. Um, I have a guest with me today, Samantha Andrews. Sam, if you want to give a shout out. Hi. Um, (laughs) Who uh, was one of my students back in the day and uh, who I just think the world of and I believe uh, really has the ability to kind of give some insight both to parents out there, to high school students, college students, and kind of like how the world goes around. So Sam uh, is presently a college student. And um, when we first met a number of years ago, it was kind of under some not good circumstances Mm -hmm. and where we kind of get into, um, I think everybody has some form of label when it comes to whether it's middle school, high school, college, the workplace. And that can sometimes work for you or against you. Um, if I, I know under our pretense when we first met, it was kind of in a negative, which, mm-hmm. which is frustrating. So if you want to give a little bit of a background in terms of maybe some of the, the labels or stigmas that you faced when you mm-hmm. were, you want to go back as far as middle school or high school and what your thoughts are. Okay. Um, well, I think the label kind of started and it happened that I got in middle school is because I had low self-esteem. Um, I didn't really have a male figure in my life uh, that made me feel good about myself. I never really was exposed to a lot of men. And I remember being very insecure in middle school. Um, And I remember just feeling like, you know, I was very developed. I I was more developed than most girls in my grade. And I remember boys, you know, because I was more developed, they'd give me attention. And my idea, I used to think, you know, a boy who, you know, said that I looked good or that I was hot or that, you know, touched me grab my butt I thought they liked me and I actually would think that wow this boy likes me and to me I felt validation for when you know boys would give me attention and because of this I got the label of being a slut in middle school and it's very sad to me because you know I wasn't sleeping around or doing all these dirty things with guys I was just you know I kissed a lot of guys and I would just let boys like I let them get away with doing disrespectful things to me and so I got this label of being a slut and then you know eighth grade year going into high school I started dating a boy who was older than me a year older than me and we were at a party and you know he asked me to have sex before and I told him no I wasn't you know I didn't want to have sex I was a virgin and he took we went to uh, his friend's house and we drank some alcohol and I was very, you know, drunk. I never really gotten drunk before. And, uh, you know, he asked me and me me being under the influence of alcohol, I didn't make a good judgment and I let him. And that was my first time. And then in high school, that even made things worse with my label. But then you just have to, what I did was instead of letting it define me, I said to myself, I'm not going to keep making the mistakes for people to say this stuff about my name. And you just have to learn that labels don't define you and you can always change your label. And even if people still think of you a certain way, you just have to realize that it doesn't matter what other people think about you, it's what you think about yourself. And that's what helped me with that label. Um, And I think you defied that label. Like I I remember when, I I, I think it was your freshman year that we met and um, you know, watching you I know you were not in a happy place the first time you stepped foot in my office I was not <laughs> but but I also think about the hundred th- I mean thousands of kids at this point that I've I've sat with and have, have challenged them in terms of the labels that they had whether they were negative or positive and you're at the time was negative and how you god I I, I, I will remember this for the rest of my life how you s- chose just like you said a few minutes ago to say okay I can either stick with this label or I could change this label Mm -hmm. and it's up to me. And people are always gonna say crap about us to whatever capacity and it's not about making them happy, but it's about you being in a good place. Mm -hmm. And so when I think about whether it's high school, college kids or parents that are listening to this, all of us have have labels. Mm -hmm. Whether it's it's past stuff to present stuff, you can't change other people. Mm -hmm. But you can get into a place that you choose to be in the direction of working on yourself 
And so, like, how do you feel like at what point did you say, okay, whether, you know, with whether it was home stuff or school stuff or peer pressure or like that you you wanted to be in a better place? Mm-hmm. Well, you know, I started seeing you because of the whole... I got in trouble with the school because, you know, I, I got in trouble with drugs, uh, sm- smoking marijuana, um, and it was, I got in trouble for something I didn't do, but anyway, I <laughs> I still got brought into it. I'm glad that all that happened, everything happens for a reason, and I was brought into Mrs. Lawler's office, and I was very reluctant. I did not want to see Mrs. Lawler. I was, you know, why am I seeing this? There's nothing wrong with me. I don't have a problem, even though I was smoking weed every day consistently. Um, but I remember she told me, she said, you know, uh, Sam, every, everyone has a choice and you make, you can make yourself and you just need to know that if you work on yourself and make yourself a better person every day, just have that goal to like every day, just become, do something good, uh, work on yourself, make little changes. Uh, and then you'll see uh, astronomical changes, and that's what happened. I I started doing little changes, like you know, saying hi to everyone and being nice to everyone, and making changes about me. You know, stop smoking weed in the morning before school. Do it, you know, just at night, and just doing little changes makes F, over time big changes. And I think seeing someone, it's very important to see someone because I would have never had those tools to use for myself if I did not see Mrs. Lawler because she brought it to my attention and she put it through my head that you need, the only person who can change you is you. And you can't change unless you want to change for yourself. And I think that's the most important thing. And I think that's a beautiful thing. And everybody, I think, comes to a fork in the road of, am I going to feel sorry for myself? Am I going to continue to, whether it's smoke my face off, pop pills, be unhealthy relationships, or, or... just, you know, hide under the covers all day. There's all different forms of not doing good things for yourself. But what an amazing thing it is to work on yourself. And and I can say this like now is from one human being to another sitting a- across the table from you. Um, holy crap. It's amazing when we have young people who stare fear, fear in the face, steer, stare all the, the crazy crap that may have happened in their life and say, you know what, I'm not going to roll around in this crap. Mm-hmm. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to go forward. And you're still going to stumble mm-hmm. because that's part of life. Oh, yeah. But but what, what I will say to whoever the heck is listening here, as long as you're breathing, you can grow. As long as you're breathing, whatever's happened in the past, whatever those labels are, labels can beat the living heck out of a middle school kid, Mm -hmm. out of a high school kid. And I think about even, you know, whoever you chilled with in high school, some of those people allowed those, whether it was justified or unjustified, Mm -hmm. like labels, whatever you want to call it, define them Mm -hmm. and what a heartbreaking thing it is Mm -hmm. and how you don't have to let that happen and Mm -hmm. how kids to hear whether it's from a counselor or a parent or an older sibling, we need to hear Mm -hmm. it's never too late to change. It's never too late to grow and how, what a beautiful thing it is to grow. And now you're in college. Mm -hmm. Are you still growing? Oh yeah. You know, it's, it's crazy because when you like thinking of changing and, and just like the labels, it's crazy because you can let a label. I used to think, cause my, my, uh, father he would tell me I was a bad kid and I always just felt like I was this awful awful kid and you actually can let a label make you feel like you are like I used to think that I was a bad kid like even though me smoking weed and me making mistakes and it's not being bad it's you're not a bad person and you were hurting I was hurting and I was going through struggles and instead of a person saying you are this you need to they need to tell you how you can change and what you can do to be better and I, I've been changing ever since Miss Lawler told me to work on myself you do these little changes it's, it's crazy because before you even know it you realize like wow I am different and being out of high school it's just changed me so much because you really find yourself out of high school you find out what makes you happy you find out what's important you find out what your direction is and even if you don't that's okay it's about doing changes to figure this out and it could be little things like you know mrs lawler she told me i told her i had bad anxiety and she used to say every time you would have these thoughts i remember she gave me a a rubber band to put around my wrist (laughs) and she said every time you hear these 
thoughts going through your head, I want you to take the rubber band and snap it on your wrist so you can feel like it's not very painful at all, but it just like jerks you and kind of makes you think like, oh, I'm having that mm-hmm. thought. I need to stop. And it started with the rubber band. You know, I would do that. And obviously I stopped doing the rubber <coughs> band, but it became more of a mental thing because <coughs> you train yourself to do the rubber band. It's like, it's like a slap on the wrist. Like, no, don't do it. So you're able to do it yourself. You don't need the rubber band. You can just think, oh, I'm, I'm having these anxiety, uh, this thought. I need to stop. And then at, over time, it's just it just becomes less and less and less. You know, you take walks. I used to take walks, and I would appreciate instead of thinking about all these awful things, I'd be like, "Wow, it's beautiful outside. It's nature. It's you just have to keep doing these changes, and and you're gonna fall back, and stuff is gonna happen. But it's about just wanting to change. And like I said, like you're not gonna change unless you really want to and genuinely want to. But it's never too late. It's never too late. You can change from when you're young. And you can change when you're 30, 40 years old, but it's better to start. I remember Mrs. Lawler told me in high school, this is the time I want you to start changing and making changes and working on yourself now because in college, things get harder, things get worse. And if you start changing yourself, like you need to start as young as possible because it's easier to mold yourself when you're young versus when you're older. Which I think is true, but I'm going to ask you this. I think whether it's a student or it's a parent, I think people are really uncomfortable with dealing with their stuff. I think there's a lot of resistance to my my young person, you know, there's a divorce going on at home, or they're having self-esteem issues, or whatever it is, fill in the blank, um, and, and not feeling that it's pressing, or we'll wait till later, and how, what would you say to that parent, or that young person who's listening, how important that period in middle school and high school to take advantage of counseling, to take advantage of helping Mm -hmm. yourself. I mean, what would your two cents be with that? Because there's a lot of resistance. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, you know, when you think of therapy and counseling, you always hear like that, that stereotype, oh, you're crazy if you go to counseling or you're, you know, insane. But everybody is a little, crazy shouldn't even be the word. Everyone has problems. Everyone has crap everyone could go to a therapist doesn't matter if you're dr phil dr phil i'm sure could go to see a therapist but it's just and probably should, yeah. yeah and it's just you know i think that every person needs help and people need to stop having the stigma that therapy therapy means you're you're something's st- wrong with you something's right. wrong with you because so what some someone has anxiety you can go to therapy for that someone has an eating disorder go to therapy mm-hmm. for that and it, the problem is with parents, it's like parents don't want to think like, oh, my kid needs help. They need to go to counseling. I can handle it myself. But sometimes you need you, you, an outside party. Mm-hmm. You can't have this, what's that word? A subjective person, right? Someone who could be objective. Uh, objective, yeah. yes. yes. Um, you need an outside party to help you through your problems, I believe. And I think that every person would benefit, no matter what mental health you're in, everybody could benefit from seeing mm-hmm. counseling because... My life didn't start changing until I saw Mrs. Lawler, who is a school, you know, my school's counselor. Person, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think everyone should should go to counseling. But you, but the cool thing is too, whether it's utilizing your, you know, the school counseling program or whether it's outside counseling, um, knowing that there's nothing to me, it's more of a positive. It's a gift when we we how we dialogue about counseling with our kids or how we dialogue as young adults, Mm -hmm. that it's like, it's actually, there's nothing wrong with me. It's actually, I'm giving a gift to myself to learn how to clear out the crap in my head Mm -hmm. because now it's going to allow me to be higher functioning Mm -hmm. and be able to succeed when I graduate high school. Yeah, you gave me tools. Going to counseling with you gave me tools. And that's the key thing about counseling. It's not trying to change you or no. trying to make you into a different person or it's like oh you're you have a drug problem and you're wrong and you know it's them saying miss mrs lawler would say you know i know you smoke weed and i know you have these problems that's okay you you can make whatever decision you make it's about maybe you know being more you just being careful and always having a friend and not knowing where you, you know the weed you're getting is coming from it's just having those tools to stem in your head like wow, maybe it's not this lace or this week could be laced or maybe I shouldn't be doing this because it's affecting me in school. It's just, it's just counseling is something that it's a tool, I think. It's a tool. And it's so much more exciting. I remember, you know, we first talked 
it will, you know, we could have spent 17 hours talking about, well, you're, you're smoking weed every day. Like, well, that's not the issue. Mm-hmm. The issue was, why are you smoking weed mm-hmm. every day? The issue is, well, why are you sad all the time? Yeah. Why are, and when we begin to dig, yeah. because we could focus on like the surface, which I just think is a disservice, or we could super dig deep. And when, when you kind of encourage that digging, which is mm-hmm. scary, um, and can be uncomfortable, mm-hmm. but it's like, it's such an awesome thing. And, and one of the things, you know, I'll, I'll kind of shout out here with, and, and as we wind down is self-maintenance and knowing with whatever point you, or maybe your child is in, and, and, and there's stigmas going on, um, there's stigmas, there's labels, don't fall into the label. Don't allow those words to come out of your mouth, wh- whether it's judging a sibling judging your kids because labels can beat the living heck mm-hmm. out of people. And if you're listening to this and you're like, man, you know, whether, you know, I'm addicted to this or whether I'm harming myself or I'm super sad or I'm super whatever the heck you're whateverness because we're human and we have things, it's never too late. And that label doesn't have to define you. It's about taking that step. Again, it's scary and working on yourself and what a beautiful, beautiful thing that is. Um, and last question I'm going to throw at you. Um, figuratively, not literally, <laughs> is if you were to sit down and have a 10-minute chat with you right now, mm-hmm. between you and 14-year-old you, mm-hmm. what do you think you'd say to yourself? Well, I would definitely tell myself that um, smoking weed, because it's funny, I used to think that weed, it made me feel part of something. My friends, the friends I was doing it with, it makes you feel like you're, like it's almost like a little click. You feel like you belong somewhere. I would tell myself that don't let weed or let something like that define yourself and don't let and I would tell myself that it doesn't matter what anybody in high school thinks it's funny because when you're in high school it's like high school's your world like that's like Mm -hmm. the end all be all like if you're you know if you have a bad reputation in high school you're screwed but it's funny because once you step out of high school you really realize like it doesn't matter about anything no matter who said what about you who said this it doesn't matter and it's crazy because the people who talk the most are the ones who get out of high school and are in college and they struggle the most because Mm -hmm. they're used to being in the spotlight or they're used to being in control and feeling like they're more superior than everyone else but it's you're not and they get into the real world and they realize wow i'm i'm like everyone else i'm not better than anyone else and i think that it's important to realize that high school no one's better than you. The popular mm-hmm. kids or whatever you think that is, like I used to be friends with all types of people. I had all different kinds of friends that sometimes it's just better to just stop caring. And I think that when I stopped caring about what people thought was when my life started getting a million times mm-hmm. better. But you chose to do that. Mm-hmm. And and you're the difference in you and mm-hmm. how you began thinking about yourself and yeah. your self value mm-hmm. and how you began your friend group changed. I remember oh, yeah. watching that too, your attitude. And I was like, dude, I literally, in a non-creepy way, wanted to follow <laughs> you around with like a, 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 a video and, and say like, this is what it's about. Mm-hmm. Somebody who chose, chose to go forward mm-hmm. and chose to t- take those tools and chose to like say, peace out to these stigmas mm-hmm. and these labels. And then it's all about you working on you. Mm-hmm. And when the other... Because what it is, the, the gossip and the drama yeah. and the popularity, it's funny. it doesn't I, matter. It's funny. I think that clicks. I, I realize this because um, I have a my mom's boyfriend's daughter. She's in middle school, tough age, 13, mm-hmm. going to high school. Super You're, tough age. Yeah. And it's funny because she's very independent. You don't find a lot of girls who have their own voice and they're independent, their own person. And usually I feel that people with cliques, they like form these cliques to feel more powerful, to mm-hmm. feel like they're more superior because they don't feel comfortable as an independent person. Mm-hmm. And I think that everyone has to realize that you just need to be yourself and be your own person and feel feel confident in your own skin and feel comfortable and if you feel comfortable in your own skin, no one can bring you down because mm-hmm. you're not going to care about what anybody else thinks. I remember I'd hear stuff about me when I was in, in freshman year and I literally wanted to cry and I felt awful. But now I hear some, if someone says something about me, I'm like, who cares? Like, yeah. I don't even. And it's their loss it's if it's anything loss. negative because they don't really know you. They don't know me. It's funny. A lot of people, I think, look at me and think all these different things about me, but they really don't know the true me. Mm-hmm. And it's it's sad, but I don't. they don't need to know me because I'm comfortable in my own skin. I don't mm-hmm. care if they think, you know, X, Y, and Z of me. I say rock on. Thank you. And and what uh, that, uh, like, just chock full 
uh, of substance when you said like it's you know people are always going to talk always about always and it's when you realize you know what instead of like what are they saying it's and they're always going to say the worst silly. thing yeah they're and, always going to make the story, whatever story it is, they're going to make it worse. Because people don't find... It's not interesting. When you go on the news, you always hear the bad things. Yeah. People care more about the negatives. They want to know what the... You know, oh, the, she did this. It will go from, oh, so she kissed her to... Or he kissed um, her. They made out to, you know, they had sex. Because mm-hmm. they want a story to talk about. Mm-hmm. Because clearly they don't have an interesting life. And they're jealous. <laughs> and, yeah. and it's empty. And to me, I'm like, for you to be able to <laughs> squish that with um, the confidence and the independence and the motivation is just, like, awesome. Mm -hmm. And so I'll say this as one female to another female, like, we need more girl power. Uh And we need more of this confidence. And so I say is, you know, you rock out the rest of your your college days, continue being contagious. Mm -hmm. And and to the the parents out there, the kids, whoever's hearing this, the you guys, um... Be confident and work on yourself. It's never too late. Whatever has happened in the mm-hmm. past has happened in the past. Going forward and growing, removing those stigmas, mm-hmm. and just being you. And so, Sam, I want to say thank you for joining me today. And thank you for everything you've done. By the way, Mrs. Lawler, <laughs> if if you guys need help, if, if you need something, Mrs. Lawler is there. And she, I've never met someone who could just make you feel good. I remember just going into therapy, going into, not therapy, but we'd have like group sessions with Miss Lawler. And it was just such a refreshing feeling. Like her personality, you can just, you just feel relaxed. You just could talk to her about anything. And she's, she's amazing. And nice. thank you for changing that. my life. Thank you for being willing to be changed and, and making the world a better place. Thank you. <laughs> so I will say signing off. Um, the drug lady. Peace. Bye. I love you, Mom. Because <laughs> you're great, Mom. Uh, you are Peace, great mom. love, and, uh, and raised a wonderful young lady and goodness. Peace out. Bye. If you enjoyed today's show, I encourage you to subscribe to Goodness Chicks Podcast and pass it along to your friends. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and have a great day.